Welcome back to the family. And you know, the reason why I named this this uh, chat or this podcast Abundance and Life and Death is because it sets the tone of what are we spending our time doing at retirement? How are we sharing all of our hard work and everything that we've done to live a good life? How are we taking care of ourselves? How are we taking care of those around us, whether it's in our family or in our community? What are we doing to be abundant? It's an interesting idea of how do we give out of nothing? So if we have a scarcity mindset, we don't have anything. And a lot of times I do talk about a lot of things that are about scarcity, whether it's finances or death or uh maybe being alone, those are scarcity mindsets. How do we turn that around and we go, how can we be truly grateful for the joy and the plenty that we have? Even if we are aging alone, we have friends, we have family, we have people in our community that we can reach out to, whether it's we're helping it by volunteering or it's helping out a friend who needs uh, groceries and I have a car so I can take my friend to the doctor or to get groceries or to do things to help others. An interesting thing happened over the holidays, which at the time I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I allowed this to happen. We had a big snowstorm here in Minnesota over the Christmas holidays and one of our neighbors across the street uh, had it shovel their yard and normally they're one of the first ones out their house is always impeccable and and the driveway is always one of the first ones snow plowed and and everything well they're getting a little bit older and of course we didn't know maybe they're out of town for the holidays and I think that's actually what ended up happening but my next door neighbor had reached out and said do you know the names of the neighbors across the street and I'm here going oh my gosh I don't even know their names I know them I say hi to them all the time They've lived in this neighborhood longer than I have. And I did not know what their names were. Very interesting how sometimes some of us are so busy living our lives and just thinking about the things that are in our own life that we are not thinking about how we can help a neighbor across the street. We were talking also about, you know, how it used to always be you needed a cup of sugar or uh, someone breaks down with some machinery or the lawnmower or whatever and all the men come around and they're fixing and they're talking about how to fix or find tools to get the job done or the women are like yep I have a cup of sugar or uh, do you you know here let me just bring over a, a plate of cookies are we doing that anymore as we're getting older are we doing that with how we treat others There's something that I've come across, and it's a group called Seniors Helping Seniors. It's a great organization, Uh, but it's a volunteer organization where when seniors live in a community, they're looking out for ways to help each other out. And it's a beautiful way for us to support and to bring community to each other and, you know, give give our lives reason and meaning. Sometimes it's hard to say, yes, I need help with doing something like grocery shopping or getting to the doctor or mowing my lawn. Sometimes it's hard to say I need that help. There's an organization that is of seniors who are retired and that's what they do. They spend their days giving to each other. When they come back to their hometowns, they don't necessarily have that support structure, uh, especially for the snowbirds who spend maybe a month or two down in Florida or Arizona or Texas or in the, in the Sun Belt. Then they come back to the their homes up here at north and it's kind of where does that go? Have we lost that ability of being in community? Or it's you know, there's just certain things that you volunteer your time with. That sense of trust has been really diminished. How do we bring that back? How do we do things that will help others? And helping others not so much to say, hey, I'm on this board, or I read to these students at the school, or uh, 
or even just I don't feel comfortable being out in public anymore. It's too scary. There's parts of this town I will not go to. And I'll be honest, I get that. But there's something because we have that attitude of scarcity, we're not reaching out to each other anymore. And so we're losing that sense of abundance and that sense of trust. And, you know, it's interesting when you trust someone else, how often is that trust reciprocated, especially when it comes to strangers or are people taking advantage of you? Is that something that just in our mind they're going to take away? But if it's the thing that we're giving away is free, it's something I'm just putting out into the world. Okay, that person may take it, but you don't know what they're doing with it. Maybe they're passing it on as well. Or maybe they need that, but then they're able to pass on something else. I was just reading the book of uh, How to Fill Your Bucket. or the <laughs> Something. Anyhow. Um, let me see if I can find the name of the book. Because suddenly, I'm just thinking this book is such a tremendous classic. That is uh, something that if you've never read it, I highly recommend it. It's, oh, the name of the book is How Full Is Your Bucket? And... It is um, available at many libraries if you don't have this book. book. But the idea of, um, there's five strategies that are shared in this book, How Full Is Your Bucket? The first one is don't take from other people's buckets, which is, again, uh, you know, give people something positive to think about in their lives. Give them a compliment. Smile at them. You know, instead of taking away from other people, maybe we find a way to add to what they're giving. Like I said, that idea of, now truly you may need something, but in turn, turn it into something else that others might need. You know, I need dirt so I can plant uh, my seeds. I have seeds, but I needed dirt. Well, when you have your plants growing, then you give of the produce that you have and you keep some seeds for next time. You know, it could be kind of that idea. The second one is shine a light on what is right. And... The, this is something that I think our retirement, our senior community, we desperately need to know what is right. You've been there. You've done that. You know what works. You know what doesn't work. And the idea of sharing what is that wisdom you've learned from your life, how do we bring that into our communities? How do we teach that to our children? I mentioned earlier about the idea that a lot of seniors love to do reading time at the local elementary schools. It was a chance for seniors to be around the energy of the little ones. There's also a lot of life lessons that you can do that we learn when we're very young. But we kind of forget some of those, like taking turns. You know, are we cutting people off on the road? Well, because we aren't taking turns like we did when we were in kindergarten. Do we follow the leader? Or are we determined to be our own leader? some of those great lessons that we learned. And so a lot of seniors are not going into elementary schools and having those opportunities of giving that wisdom to our youngest generation. What can we do to bring that back? The third lesson from How Full Is Your Bucket is make best friends. Now this isn't just one person, but it's typically a group of people. It could be a dinner group. It could be um, taking road trips or having game night. These are people that you connect with and you play with and you laugh with. And as a group, you are celebrating life. Do you have someone like that? Are you looking for someone or a group of people to join? The fourth one is give unexpectedly. And it doesn't need to be money. It could be a smile. It could be holding the door open for somebody. It could be, uh, you know, maybe inviting someone for a cup of coffee or going out to lunch. These are the, the gifts that we give each other. It could be time, going for a walk. These are the things that we can give to build that community and connect with each other. Have you done anything like that recently? The final one that I... You know, it's always interesting because we talk about the golden rule. And the golden rule is, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But this one is almost what they call as the platinum rule. 
do unto others as they want to be, uh, how they want to be treated. So we talk about, you know, some people, what you may do for them may be painful. It may be difficult. It may be something that they just don't get, uh, whether it's words of affirmation, uh, doing service for them. Like we mentioned, talked earlier about, you know, going by and doing uh, yard work or running errands. It could be gifts. It could be getting a hug. When was the last time you've been hugged? I mean, really hugged. Most people are still six feet away and they are like, I don't want to get close. Some people really need that physical touch and ask for a hug if you need one. It's okay. And then, you know, again, going for a walk, spending time, have a cup of coffee. These are the simple things that we can do to help each other be more abundant. Because when we are feeling that our lives are full, we can give that to others. And what is that legacy? And so we leave this all out to what is the legacy? And the legacy is how do you want to leave this world? What do you want to be remembered by? Because truly our time and our purpose here on this earth is about giving to others. Our lives matter. What we do in the time that we are here on this earth matters. It matters to others. What do you want them to be leaving with? So after you're no longer here and they're sharing stories about you, what is the point of those stories? Living a life of abundance means that you can have a happy death. And isn't that kind of what all of us want to have? We know our time here is up to a higher power. It's limited. But it doesn't need to be without meaning. So if you have meaning, you have purpose, you've touched people's lives, you've brought joy into this world, that is the best thing we can ask of each other. If you want to know more about this or reach out, contact me at Our Family Encounter. Uh, my website is ourfamilyencounter.com. And also we talk about this and many other things in my book, Last Life Lesson, which can be ordered off the website. We look forward to connecting with you and hearing from you. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Be safe, be kind, 